more than 800 people with one mission, promoting a healthy environment. We are the West Virginia Department of Environmental Protection. Look up sustainable communities and you'll find example after example of cities working to improve the quality of life. But those challenges are often greater in rural Appalachian communities like Williamson. Located in one of the most economically distressed counties in the region, Williamson finds itself at a crossroads. But unlike many once booming towns in West Virginia, Williamson has a roadmap. The DEP's Brent Kessinger has their story. Incorporated in 1892, the city of Williamson grew and thrived serving the local coal, timber, and railroad industries. The county seat of Mingo County, its downtown was the banking and retail center for the entire area, but times have changed, forcing Williamson to reinvent itself. In short, this is not your grandfather's Williamson. Uh, with the government trying to survive with expenses rising and incomes kind of flat, that we needed to try to develop our projects that would take care of themselves. We needed to focus on some of our bad things, our, 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 our negative things turned out to be some of our opportunities, our weaknesses are some of our opportunities. Darren McCormick is mayor of Williamson and what began as a plan to look for ways of saving energy and improving efficiency has grown far beyond that. One of those projects, Williamson's Community Garden, a plot of land that offers space for anyone in the community to plant a garden. But this garden is growing more than just fresh tomatoes. Hopefully we can teach people to, you know, eat a little better, exercise a little bit, and getting out in the fresh sunshine and tending to your plants or looking at everybody else's and picking the fruits of your labors is a very good thing. Helen Stanley is a local business owner who also manages the local farmer's market, an outgrowth of the community garden. Helen says greenhouses at the garden will eventually be able to provide fresh produce year-round and that the farmer's market has grown from a once-a-month experiment to a weekly community event. We've had some very, very good turnouts for it and a lot of positive um, comments from people. They're tickled to death that we're doing this and we're offering locally grown um, everything, everything. The availability of fresh, locally grown food will help address one of Williamson's major health concerns. According to U.S. Department of Agriculture estimates, roughly one-eighth of adults in Williamson are diabetic and more than a third are obese, numbers well above the national average, but they're not taking those numbers sitting down. And we, this is in, we have four teams that have actually made it to or swimming in the ocean right now. Vicki Hatfield is a diabetic education specialist at Williamson Family Care Center. She's referring to the lunch walkers, teams of Williamson residents who are logging their lunchtime walking miles and translating those to an imaginary trip from Williamson to California. She says even if residents have a family history of the disease, history doesn't have to repeat itself. If people are healthy and they're well, they're, they're going to be productive. They're going to feel like doing things in the community and helping out the efforts that we're doing here. Uh, and they're going to be like around, around a lot longer as well. And if you're wondering how improving community health affects local economic development, it's not that big a stretch. Really it's about integration and creating connections between the different projects that communities are working on. So I, I find it um, one of the primary uh, things that lead to a successful sustainability program with any community is figuring out how, take for instance what we're doing here in Williamson, how food systems is linked to diabetes, is linked to workforce development, is linked to sustainable tourism, and really linking all those together to where it's building off of each other project's capacity. In some places, they'll call that a green economy. Well, in, in here, in the heart of the billion dollar coal field, with what they're feeling like is uh, the application of, in the holding back on mining permits and things like that, we felt that the green, saying we were going green would be controversial. So we intentionally chose the word sustainable. And as we've held sustainable, sustainability workshops and things like that, what we've tried to do is educate our, our, our uh, citizenry that we're, all we're trying to do is 
is be more efficient and be smarter about the way we do things. Sustainable Williamson is working to create a model for sustainable development in low wealth communities of central Appalachia, advancing rural economies, encouraging local entrepreneurs, and developing a 21st century capable workforce. All I'm trying to do is get everybody to the table. The sustainability movement can help the coal mining industry, particularly with post mine development. These are opportunities that we've never had before for large tracts of lands to be developed that we wouldn't otherwise have the opportunity to develop to create real economic opportunity. I think we already are a model, I really do. Um, we have, uh, like I said, we're a small community that, that's been able to, to, to reach out to different resources, pull them together, and the community's gotten behind what we're doing. Creating a model that can be copied across rural West Virginia and beyond. In Williamson, I'm Brent Kessinger for Environment Matters. Mayor McCormick says he also sees a great opportunity in sustainable tourism. He says the recent Hatfield and McCoy miniseries has generated a lot of interest in the area from all over the country. Coming up, stories from summer camp. We'll check out the Youth Environmental Program's Junior Conservation Camp.